Budget fam, it's Jordan from Jordan Budgets. Today we are going to do something a little bit different on this channel. Typically this is a cash stuffing channel. I use cash for everything and I have four binders to back me up on that. I really, really, really prefer to use cash. The main reason for me is that cash keeps me accountable. If I have money in the bank or if I try to use a card, I will swipe that card like there is no tomorrow. I don't think about it. I just have no control that way. So I am a cash budgeter. We do mostly cash stuffings on this channel, but we do a bit of talk about budgeting as well as how I make money on Etsy and YouTube. So just to set the scene there, typically this is a very cash heavy channel. However, I am traveling this week and I am not somebody who travels with cash. For whatever reason, I feel very comfortable having cash on me when I'm out and about in my local area. Now don't get me wrong, at most I have $200 on me at a time and that is like at most. I don't typically have a lot of money on me and if I have $200 on me it is for a very short period of time because I'm just carrying around some of my variable spending money. However, I do have cash and binders here and I keep these binders safe in a safe <laughs> in my house. So I'm not typically somebody that's worried about having too much cash on me, right? But whenever I'm traveling, I just don't feel that way because I don't know the area. I don't know what I'm getting myself into exactly. So I don't travel with cash. I have a little bit of cash just in case of an emergency. I always have maybe 20 or $40. So I'm, I'm rambling at this point, but just setting the scene. Typically I'm a cash person. When I'm traveling though, I don't bring cash. Now I will admit I'm not as accountable with my money when I'm traveling. And it's for the same reason that I tend to like cash when I'm not traveling, right? So I don't typically budget this way unless I'm traveling just because I know that I'm not going to hold myself to the same standard and accountability that I do with cash. But if you are somebody who is hesitant to use cash and you can hold yourself accountable, I think this is a really great way. And it's a really simple way. This isn't something that's going to take a lot of your time. We are gonna be pulling some cash from these binders in just a minute and I'm gonna talk about how I handle the transition from using cash to using card whenever I'm traveling. But let's first start out and talk about my budget and what I'm going to need and how I would do a cashless budget system for the week. For me, there's really four variable spending categories. That is gas, groceries, food, and fun. So once I've established the four categories, I then need to set my budget. So if I was setting this for a weekly budget, my gas is typically $30, groceries is $120, food or fast food is about $20, and then fun I pull from spending money or maybe I have a little bit of fun money or self-care money or something like that. That's not something I typically have a weekly budget for, although you absolutely could. So that would be my typical numbers. However, since I'm traveling, the budget is going to be a little bit higher. So right under my categories, I'm gonna put the amount I'm budgeting for that category. So for gas, I'm expecting to pay about $250 because I am driving from South Mississippi all the way to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm gonna be dri driving when there and then I'll be driving back. So honestly, I hope I can do it on 250, but based on my recent trip there, 250, it seems pretty realistic. Groceries, I'm gonna be budgeting $80. I will be staying in an Airbnb, so I plan on having a full kitchen. So groceries, I'm going to budget $80 for the week that I'm gonna be there. Food is something I would typically only have maybe $20 for, maybe a little bit more if I'm splurging, but because we're traveling, I'm giving us a $100 fast food or eating out budget. $100 is relatively low, but in the scale of things, it's just me and my two little boys. So food isn't something that we put a big priority on. Now, if you are a couple, you're gonna have a few date nights when you're traveling, you might need a higher eating out budget. I just know that we would rather have more fun money versus food money. We will eat like a pretzel stick at the mall, you know? Like we are not, <laughs> We're not foodies. I'm especially not a foodie when it comes to eating out with my five and my seven year old boy. Fun, I am going to give us a $340 budget. So I put this on an index card so that I can easily put it in my purse, put it in my wallet and carry this around for me. How I would use this once I'm actually out. So I'm gonna remake this for whenever I travel because I just wanna go ahead and show you guys how I would use this. So let's say on my trip on Monday, I get $40 worth of gas. I would write Monday, negative 40, and then I have $210 left. 
So I would just keep a tally going down the gas column of when I'm spending gas and how much I spent. Same for groceries, food, and fun. This is how I would do things if I were doing a cashless system. I just think this is very easy. Now, because I am a cash budgeter, let's talk really quick about how I pull things from my binder and see how much money I have and sort of like where I'm at, right? I go through all of my binders and pull money from all of my categories like winter vacation, anything that I might be saving money for this trip. Winter vacation is really the only spot where I've been saving for, but for example, if you were saving for like a, a zoo trip and a vacation fund, like if you had different categories that you could pull money from different places, that's where I would take the opportunity to do that. Now, in addition to winter vacation money, I can also pull my grocery money for the week because I will be buying my groceries while I'm there, so there's no reason I can't use that money. Same for gas for the week. I did put aside $30 for gas this week, so I could use that $30 towards that $250 in gas, and then same for fast food. That does not cover everything for me, so let's talk about this for a second. Gas, groceries, food, and fun. I wrote down realistically what I actually need, not necessarily exactly what my present budget is limited to. Now this is why I kept this separate and towards the end because this is real life for me. I'm a single mom. I don't want to go on a vacation, spend all this gas money, and then not have any fun money just because I don't quite have it yet. I will be putting some of this money on a credit card, but I'm still giving myself a limit, right? $340. We want to go to the zoo. We want to go to the space museum. I want to take them to a trampoline park that is there. I don't want to take away those things just over $100. I can easily pay that back in the next few weeks into the vacation fund, right? So keep that in mind. This is a real budget. This isn't necessarily what you should do. Ideally, I would have these numbers figured out and I would have already saved for that. It just didn't happen and I didn't want to pull money from other places just to put it here. Because if I would have pulled money from other places, I would have given myself like a $500 fun budget, right? So I do these things this way just to, one, it is realistic, but also this helps keep me somewhat accountable, right? So let's see how much we're going over. Gas, we're going to need 250, 100, 250. So we've got gas covered. Groceries, we are going to need 50, 60, 70. $80 for groceries, food we are going to need 50, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90. So we are over $360 that I will be putting onto a credit card, but keep in mind I did already pay like $1,000 towards an Airbnb and I do have gas, groceries, food covered. So there's just a bit of fun money that I will be paying off over the next few weeks. If you are thinking about doing a cashless budget or you are somebody that just watches these kinds of videos but doesn't want to do all of the actual cash, this is an easy way to do basically the same thing and keep yourself accountable. Hey guys, future Jordan here. I am back from my trip. It was absolutely wonderful. I wanted to update you guys on the budget how I did it in real life and how things sort of came to be as far as the numbers go. So this is the card that I brought with me. You can see that I did not end up tracking what day I spent what. I don't think I was accounting for the fact that when traveling, things are a little bit more hectic than ever in everyday life. I did just track the numbers though, so, so it's still functioning the exact same way that I had intended it to. So I did just edit the first half of this video, and I want to say if you guys are still with me, thank you. I know that video was really choppy, and I was a bit scattered. I did film the first portion of this video at like 5 o'clock in the morning before I left for my trip, so it was a little bit of a hectic first start of this video and I am sorry about that so if you're still with me thank you so much uh, if you have any questions definitely feel free to leave them below but anyways so how this ended up being is gas I budgeted $250 you can see I filled up several times I did include filling up right before I left and then filling up when I got back I was gone in the middle of this time when the gas prices first started to rise so I am actually surprised that gas price total for my entire trip was $175 because I was for sure I was going to go over budget. So I think I gave myself a good, you know, a good amount there. Groceries, I only spent $60 instead of $80, so I stayed well within my range there as well. 
food. I did overspend more than I thought I was going to need. I expected to only need about $100. I ended up spending about $168. That is for fast food, snacks, eating out. I didn't account for all of the like mall food and we did go to Olive Garden one time. I sat down with the boys and had Olive Garden and then Chick-fil-A, somehow Chick-fil-A was $26. I think that Chick-fil-A and some of the fast food restaurants are definitely more expensive in Nashville and I didn't really account for that. I expected prices to be about the same. There's also a $48 here, that was for Chili's. I really didn't expect me and the kids to eat sort of like at sit down places or, and I definitely didn't expect to spend like $48 at Chick-fil-A, but these things somehow happened. <laughs> So in the future when I do go out, I will allot myself a little bit more money for food. And then for fun, I actually spent under the allotted amount. I spent 257 instead of the 340. There was an Amazon bookstore. We spent money there. We did go to the Adventure Science Center. We went to Lego, like there's a Lego store in Nashville that we went to. We don't have a Lego store local to me. So we did spend a little bit of money. I think that was the $56 here. Urban Air was our most expensive thing that we did. It was $75. We got gas station food, which I think I allotted under fun money. I think that's what this $33 is. And I put that under fun money because at one of the gas stations, the kids did get a few toys. It wasn't just like snacks. So I put that under the fun money. And what else did we do? I think that was about it. The rest of our time was spent at parks and some free things and driving around and checking out different areas because you guys know I went as a preparation to prepare the kids that we are moving to that area and wanted to show them around different places and get them excited about it. The only thing we didn't get to do on the trip that I really wanted to do was we did not go to the zoo. So I did not spend money on admission to the zoo, which I think helped keep our fun money down. That was not an intentional budget decision. We just were so busy. We didn't have a time to go to the zoo. We were there for four full days and then there was two full days of driving. So we were gone almost an entire week, but we only had four full days there. Okay, so for our budgeted amount, I expected to spend, I don't know why I have the calculator here because I just did it off screen, uh, budgeted for all of these categories, I expected to spend $770. Don't forget I did spend $1,000 on an Airbnb that I had already saved for, already paid for, so it's not in this budget. But total for our vacation to Nashville, I spent $770 or $1,770 if you're counting that Airbnb. And then the actual amount was Six hundred and sixty. So we were able to stay under the budgeted amount. If you guys remember from the first half of this video, I did have budgeted three hundred and fifty dollars over what I actually had saved. What I ended up doing is I did not do a cash stuffing for our sinking funds during that vacation week last week. So I basically put the three hundred ish that I would have put into sinking funds. I put it towards this vacation and paid off the credit card already. So I've already like evened everything out. It was absolutely a great trip. It was well worth the money spent and I cannot wait to see what next adventure we are saving for. To wrap up this video, I just want to say again, thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this video. And of course, if you watch my content, if you purchase from my Etsy shop, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys have supported me in this particular vacation for sure. So I appreciate you guys so much for that. As always, I love you guys and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.